Okay, this is not on yet. Yes, it is. It? Okay, okay, okay. Alright. Um, hi, we, ha we are very happy and thankful to have Dr. Meeks speak with us today um, about civic mobilization and also sort of the future of civic mobilization as we are the younger generation. So I think this will be a very important opportunity for us all to hear about what she has to say and sort of get that insight so that we can use it to bring a new depth to our lives in this nation. Thank you. Raise your hand. We can make this interactive. I know you're eating, so yeah, do your thing. 
All right, so what is black excellence? If you had to define black excellence, how would you define it? Anyone, shout it out, please. Black people being excellent. Black people being excellent. I like that. It's to the point. Anyone else? Education? Collective accomplishments of the black community as a whole? So according to the Urban Dictionary, oh, 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 wait, oh, I forgot what I was doing, that comes later. <laughs> so, so is this black excellence? I'll get that on track. This black excellence? Does anyone know who this is? Yeah. So there was a movie made. This is Mary Jackson. Mary Jackson, I always, people always know who uh, Catherine Johnson is, but this was another one of the hidden figures that maybe the movie or the book that you have read. And she was uh, played a significant role in ensuring that astronauts made it where they were supposed to be and back safely. Is this black excellence? Yeah. Should I ask everybody, do we know who that is? No. Yeah. <laughs> you really mad. Okay, yeah, I don't want anybody in trouble. <laughs> is this black excellence? Adia Barnes, head oh. University of Arizona Bas women's basketball coach. Is this black excellence? Yeah. Sydney Carter, this is the assistant coach at Texas A&M. And a women's basketball, also played for WNBA. I include this picture just because there's a controversy going on right now. People don't like the way she dresses. And so we can talk about discrimination based on fashion choices, but I think it's just an interesting juxtaposition with Adia Barnes and Sidney Carter. Is this black excellence? Who is this? You can tell this is an older image. You know who that is? Charles Drew. Has anyone ever heard that name? Surgeon. First African-American surgeon. And he had all kinds of amazing skills that had a lot to do with the storage and uh, of blood. So when you think about giving blood, if anyone's ever given blood, had to receive blood, you can think, yeah. yeah. Black yeah. excellence? Yeah. Who is that? Yeah. Amanda Gorman. And I'm asking you their names because I do think it's important to say people's names. That's going to be a way for you to remember. Is this black excellence? I don't know. You're not sure this time. Is that black excellence? I have no idea who these people are. <laughs> I just look for, I think I Google mothers. But to me, as a mother, that's black excellence. You don't have to be a celebrity. Is this black excellence? Who is that? This is Billy Porter, fashion icon, author, actor, uh, activist in the LGBTQ plus community. Billy Porter, remember that name? Is this black excellence? Do you know who that is? Is he, say a little bit louder. You might be right, I just couldn't hear you. I'm not saying you're wrong, I just couldn't hear you. Yes, yes. This is Reginald Bolden. He is Arizona House of Representatives uh, minority, minority leader. But this is someone to know because he's right here in the state of Arizona. Is this black excellence? I don't know these boys either, but. <laughs> They're black excellence. Is this black excellence? Not sure, I saw that. Is that black excellence? Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about, I don't know her name, <laughs> but this, was, this image uh, has made headlines during the height of the Black Lives Matter protests and activism at the uh, protests to talk about the police brutality and the killing of unarmed 
black men and women. Is this black excellence? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Had to throw in a Super Bowl poll. <laughs> All right. So according to the Urban Dictionary, uh, black excellence is someone that is black and portrays great qualities and abilities that make the black community proud. Pretty straightforward, but this is the definition that I love. Black excellence is a mindset infused with knowledge, wrapped in confidence, backed by action, and immersed in gold. Whew. That's black excellence. And I believe that represents all those images that we saw before. All right. today and now. 
So how many of you have ever heard, uh, I apologize, I was getting fancy with the, the colors, that's probably difficult to see, but the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, SCLC. All right, oh, tell me what you know about SCLC. Anyway. Go ahead, Chris. SNCC and SNCC, both 
doing great work, trying to get to the same finish line, but took a different route to get there. So Dr. King, nonviolent, uh, we are going to uh, educate, we are going to go in places and do this in a very structured um, way. And then SELC, also structured, you know, that kind of thing, but made up of younger people. What you may not be able to see here is this was a multiracial group, not to say that SNCC was, or SELC was not multiracial, but it was led by black ministers. And so that was the majority of the makeup of that particular group. So I started to talk about service and how that looks different. And thank you so much for, for mentioning the late, great John Lewis. So these are images that no one can't see very well, I apologize, of John Lewis, who put his life on the line many times. And one image that I especially want to point out that you probably can't see very well is this one here. This is him, and you might be able to see he's got bandages, like just boom, right there on his head. What do you think that means? Someone struck him there. John Lewis, Dr. King, and many others were a part of a movement that was violent. Although they didn't want to respond with violence, water holes coming your way, sticks, dogs, violence. So John Lewis's active service, in addition to serving uh, as a representative, his active service was also given of his consent, physically his body. We don't often think about that as service. But for someone who would go and you see multiple Images of, um, what are they called? I've been arrested and I have a mugshot. Multiple mugshots because he was willing to, get, to be arrested. It's putting your body on the line. You don't know in the South during this time what that prison, what that jail cell would be like if he would walk out of it. If it would be a mystery what happened to him. But he was willing to do it over and over again. And so I want you to also just consider that as an act of service as well. So I know I'm running short on time, but just one more thing I wanna, I wanna go through. Wait, do you, can you see these images at all? What is, this is, what, is, what do you think when you see these images? Black Panthers, yes, I heard it over here too, Black Panthers. So these images that I selected here, they look very militant, they've got guns, so I want to talk about that. What do you know about the Black Panther Party? Let me go somebody in. Okay. Uh, so the Black Panthers were, uh, as opposed to Martin Luther King, like sort of pacifist ideology, they wanted to get paid for the violence. Um, and they were a lot more direct with their methods. And uh, one of their leaders was up to that.
It was about uplifting the community. So the things that people don't talk about is the free breakfast that they provided for families who couldn't provide meals. The school support, the academic support and tutoring that happened in the community. Those are the things, the health clinics that were created because people, uh, black people were not provided with adequate health care in certain communities. That's why they started, but their approach was also, we are sick of you trying to kill us, and so we're going to be militant if we need to be. So here we are now in the midst of a global health pandemic that has impacted communities of color in extreme ways. And we still have the killing of unarmed black people. Do you know these people? Do the faces look familiar to me, to you? One of them? All right, I'm gonna say all of their names because I want you to know who they are. I'm gonna go across the top. Elijah McClain, Breonna Taylor, Sandra Bland, Dante Wright, Amir Locke, who was just murdered during a no-knock warrant on February 2nd, so a couple of weeks ago, so these aren't old things that I'm bringing up. George Floyd, Rayshard Brooks, and Tony McDay. This is still happening, and this is just a few. This is just a few. So I want to talk to you about the NAACP, which is the was founded in, yes, please go ahead. Yeah. That was close, that was close. The N is for national, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. Remember how we talked about names changing? The C, we don't necessarily need to call anybody colored these days. Um, so we often just say NAACP rather than saying the whole name, but that is what it stands for. This was an organization that began in 1909. So 113 years ago, this organization began, and it was made, it was founded not just by black people. So I want to be very clear about that. In the NAACP, although the C would represent black people, it was not just black people. It was made up of a multiracial group of people who were committed to ending discrimination based on race. 1909, 113 years. And here I am now, the president of this 113-year-old organization. And here in Tucson, we've existed since 1919. So right here in Tucson, we've been around for 103 years. I wish we did not exist. I wish we did not exist. I am the president of an organization that I wish would go away. I wish it would go away because I wish we could reach our goal. And that is to end race-based discrimination for all people. If we could achieve that, then we wouldn't need the NAACP and other organizations like it. But 113 years later, we're still here, and guess what? We still have a lot of work to do. New things have come up. Things that we may not have addressed in the past, we're looking at. We're looking at disparities in health. We're looking at, as some of you will go on to college, we're looking at student loan debt and the impact of student loan debt on the black community and communities of color, on all students. That's a concern for us. We're looking at the criminal justice system and the pipeline that brings young, I want to say students of color, but young, young people in our community through the juvenile justice system that just leads them right into the adult system. And that's where they are. We talk, we talk about mental health. We talk about mental health, which is something many people don't want to talk about. It's important because it impacts so many different things. So this is an organization that we really wish would go away. But while we're still here, because we're not done fighting, and our, our motto this year, we kind of have a different motto, uh, is fighting forward. I continue to fight forward and I want to encourage you all to fight forward. I want to tell you that there's something for all of us to do, whether it's having a conversation with each other, like what just happened right here, let's talk about things. I love that this student organization, thank you to those of you who start, I'm not sure who all, but I know 
Um, I know that Chris and IV were part of it and many others. Uh, but thank you for this because this is a space where you can talk about the tough stuff. I work at the University of Arizona with people with doctorates and degrees and experiences. And when we start talking about the R word, race, it shuts down. It shuts down. And that's the problem. So guess what? An organization like the NAACP will be around for another 113 years if people don't even want to have the discussion. So I want to encourage you to respectfully have the tough discussions. Give one another grace and understand that we're all learning. So you might say the wrong thing. You might say something that hurts someone. Acknowledge it. Acknowledge it. And then make sure you don't do it again. But we have to work together. We have to work together. So I'm sorry, I'm talking. I want to encourage you all, but I also want to, uh, if there are any of you who would be interested in being a part of this organization, uh, at our adult branch, we have lots of groups and uh, subcommittees that, that work together. We have political action. We have criminal justice. We're looking at health and housing. Uh, but we also have a youth council. And so if you are interested in the Youth Council, I brought cards, I can direct you to uh, all this information, but if this is something that you might be interested in being a part of, we have, we have our welcome mat for you. And we would love to have you and hear your ideas from your perspective, because my perspective is mine. And I've been in this leadership role, but wow, how, how could we advance if we brought in new ideas and try something new. Our reach would be greater because it wouldn't just be the people Sheree knows. We can now expand to who someone else knows. That's important. That's how we do the work in our community to make our community a better one, a stronger one. So my favorite quote, because I just put it everywhere. Oh, oh, wait, there's another slide, little photos. So, <laughs> so I just wanted to share with you all some of the things that we do. Um, in the NAACP, we have a Freedom Fund Dinner, so I will also make sure that you all have the information. We have a scholarship. Our Freedom Fund Dinner helps us to raise money so that we can provide a scholarship. So uh, if you are a high school senior or when you are, uh, we have a scholarship available as well as once you are in college. So, and it can be college, it can be a vocational trade, uh, but whatever you are doing to, um, to do the next thing. Uh, we support that. We also had a book club, so I heard, you know, it was kind of started as possibly a book club, but we read the book Dear Martin, and we had some discussions about that. I want to give that away. Uh, we do service uh, with the Community Food Bank, and we've been able to donate. Just two weeks ago, we had some of our members that were able to testify at the state capitol about a bail reform initiative that we have proposed. I won't go into all those details now, but that was really cool. We were giving out items to um, folks who had housing insecurity at a local church. And this is me with, uh, with a student who's now a medical student at the U of A um, at the Tucson uh, Martin Luther King March that we have annually, but we have it in the last couple of years or so. So, all right, so now the quote that I want to share with you all. It is, and this is so important to me. When I dare to be powerful, to use my strength in the service of my vision, then it becomes less and less important whether I am afraid. That's all you, Lord. I share that with you because this is not always easy. Being in spaces where people will say, that's wrong, that's a bad idea, you're not smart enough, you don't belong here, that's not true, get over it. It's not always easy to be the voice, but I know that what I'm doing is gonna impact my God. I don't want my child to be fighting for the things that I'm fighting for that my grandmother fought for. We gotta end this cycle. Now is the time. And so I wanna encourage you all to find something, do it, stand in it. What do we, what do we say about, you, you might not be black, you might not identify as black, but remember that part about you know being wrapped in confidence. I want you to do that in the classroom too. When you raise your hand to give an answer, say it confidently. And if it's not the right answer, that's all right, but you said it with confidence. We have to be more confident in who we are. Okay, I have talked and talked. I did not leave enough time for questions. Any questions? Anthony, right? Oh, good 
question, I didn't mention it. Um, I teach a class about policing and incarceration. So I created a course. Uh, we have what we call a common reading book, so we encourage all of our students to read this one book in common, and then we talk about themes and ideas from this book. One particular year, our book was Just Mercy. You may have seen the movie. Oh, I encourage you to read the book. Uh, but um, based on that, students were really interested in learning more about the justice system, and that was something that I personally have interest in, and so I created a course um, that would focus on the um, experiences of black people in particular um, with policing and then that experience with incarceration. I also teach, you know, some of the entry, uh, what do they call, university one-on-one class about, you know, we get here, yeah. That was not as exciting. I mean, it's great, it's important, it's important. Watch my words, okay. It's great, I'll move on. <laughs> yes. Your could have been to could be. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, could be. Right? Okay, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, in high school, so in high school, I was active as a leader, I was part of our student council and those kinds of things. And so I was always, 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 I was also, I should say, 
Uh, I'm very interested in politics. That is important to me. I have a degree in political science. And so for me, I took every chance I could to write my legislature. Because that was something I didn't have to ask my parents to take me to the Iowa State Capitol. I could write a letter. We didn't, we didn't have email when I was in high school. We just didn't get Well, I'm not that old. But we didn't have email, so I could write a letter. I could talk to other students about what was going on. When I got to college stuff, I was older, and so you know I had just had a little bit more freedom to do things. I was much more active. Uh, I was a participant in lots of protests. Um, one in particular that I remember um, that I'm so proud of is there was an effort to, um, at the, on the University of Iowa campus, we had a Latino Native American Cultural Center, an Afro House, which is the African American Cultural Center, and then the Asian Pacific American Islander Cultural Center. There was talk of, and these would be beautiful houses, um, you know, down this one particular road, there was talk about combining them all into a multicultural center. Well, I didn't like that. I still don't like that. And I know, you know, there were a lot of people that were against that because it, it took away the individuality. And it, it would take away from the fight that people had back in the 60s to create these spaces that were something special. And so that, that was some activism that I was a part of. Even now, as I told you, being able to go to the, to the Arizona State Capitol, be a part of writing legislation. So I was a part of writing <laughs> legislation on bail reform, which I had never done before in my life. It was just so insightful. Um, we went down on, I think it was the 9th of February. We had a hearing. It was voted down. But guess what? I don't feel like it's over. So I talk about bail reform like it's going to happen. Because it will. Although it didn't pass in the, in the House Judiciary Committee for the House to even uh, hear it, to, for it to go to vote, that's okay. Not this time, but maybe next time. Now we know who we need to get on our side and who we need to work with so that we can get it passed. Now, you know, there's a lot of people that just don't like it. We know that. We know that. But now we can strategize in a different way. So don't, if, if something doesn't work out, just get back up. Try it again. Because I tell you, the things that John Lewis was fighting for, getting beaten the head for, he may not have seen it in 1970 when it was happening, but maybe by 2000, it came to fruition. So we, we have to be patient, but keeping in the fight. This is a shirt that I have on uh, from our, and it actually has a quote from, well, it's not a quote, uh, but in the spirit of John Lewis, here comes good trouble. So that's what we call our youth council. Uh, the good, the good trouble you council, and on the back you can't see the back because I have this on, but I think it's cool. So I'm shut. Sure. Should be celebrated or individuals. I think we can do both. 
in here with you all, but I'm uplifting the NAACP. So that's the community, that's an organization. So I think it is okay to, to uplift both and all. You know, we don't have to pick one or the other.